All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to implement ray casting with your weapon. So I have my pistol right here, and now I'm not gonna damage him by clicking on him. I'm shooting a ray out and then doing damage that way. That gets you some cool things, like you can navigate uh, accessories a little easier, and then maybe do different things with different types of armor, or, this is what I prefer, let's say you have a whole stack of zombies. Zombies are coming at you, and you have armor piercing rounds. Boom! You can go right through all of them. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I have the Fresh World right here. I'm going to get my simple gun from a few videos ago, so go to your favorite web browser. I'll put this link in the description. If you don't have it, this will be green. It says Get. You just press that. Then, when you go to your toolbox, right, and you just search for Simple Gun, you'll have something to work with. Follow along. And we have two scripts, very, very basic scripts, right? No kickback, no nothing. This just basically shoots, does damage, makes a bang sound. But we're going to retrofit it with some ray casting. All right, on my pistol, I'm going to have two scripts, right? I got my shoot script, which is a client script or a local script, and then a damage script because you have to do damage server side. So this is a server script. All right, let's take a look at the shoot script, the client side. All right, so this is where we do our... This handles our mouse clicks and stuff like that. And when I do a mouse click, on activated is triggered. And then I fire a remote event to the server to do damage, passing in the target, the thing that my mouse clicked on. But I'm also going to pass in this thing called the hit, right? You can read about it. Um, but I'll show you how to use it, and that's probably more important. All right, let's go to our damage, right? I have damage right here. also have it open. And in damage... I'm going to add a few variables. I'm going to add a variable for the tool, right? So I'm going to do script.parent. That's the tool. There's my damage. The parent is the pistol. I am going to use a variable for the range, right? We're not going to make the range infinite, which is an advantage of using ray casting, right? You can use a range. So let's say 300 studs. You can't shoot farther than that. I'm also going to need a variable for the filter list or filter. I'll call it filter table. That's to filter things out so that the ray cast can ignore it, like maybe glass or accessories, things like that. I'm going to make that an empty table up here on the top, and then we'll populate it as we find things we want to put into our filter table. I'm also going to need a parameters variable. I'll call this params, and this is my ray cast params. Raycastparams.new. Cool. Now let's take a look at our on shoot function. That is triggered on the client side. We're going to capture the remote event. We're going to call on shoot. On shoot will always get a player if it's coming from the client, which it is, right? Even though we didn't pass that on the client side, we're going to get the player. And then we have the target that got passed in. And if you'll recall, we passed in this thing called hit. Right, we're going to go in here, we're going to play our bang, we need that. And then we check to see if there's a target, and the target parent exists, and then we'll do damage to the humanoid if the humanoid exists. Here, we're going to get rid of that, and we're going to get ready for our ray cast. I'm going to need the character. So the character, which I'll call char, is going to be found on the tool's parent, because we're holding the tool when we do our on shoot. I'm also going to set up our filter table. I'm going to reinitialize that, right? Because every time we shoot, we're going to want a different filter table, the way I have it set up now. And then I'm going to use this table library function. There is a function called insert, which allows us to insert things into tables. We're going to get our filter table and insert the character into the filter table. We don't want to hit ourself or like our hand or our foot, anything on ourself, right? So I'll get the parameters, uh, the raycast parameters variable, which we call params. I'm going to select this filter descendant instances and then set that to our filter table that has the character in it. That way we don't have to, we don't worry about hitting our hand and our foot and stuff like that. All right, so on the params, the raycast parameters that we call params, we are also going to need to set the filter type, right? So we have a filter table. We have it set. 
but we need to be a little more specific on what type of filtering we're going to do. So we're going to use this enum raycast filter type blacklist. That is an exclusion list, right? You can read about it. I only ever use the blacklist. So if you put stuff in here in that filter table, it's not going to hit it, right? It's going to ignore it. Whitelist, it's only going to hit the stuff that's in the table. All right. Now I'm going to need something called cast ray. I'm going to pass in the hit, right? That's going to be a new function. I'm going to put this function right here, local function cast ray. The hit gets passed in. Now we're going to cast our ray from our pistol to the thing that we got, that we clicked on. I'm going to make a variable called origin. This is the beginning of the ray. And I'm going to make it equal to script.parent.handle, right? There's a handle in the pistol. The script's parent is the pistol. And we're going to have a position on that handle. There we go. And I'm going to need a stop, right? So this doesn't go on for infinity. We only have a certain amount of um, distance that the ray can go. I'm going to use the hit position, right? That's the thing that I clicked on. The origin, right? And I'm going to do this dot unit. That's going to give me the direction between my pistol and the thing I clicked on. And then I'm going to multiply that by a range, right? And we made that 300. So this ray is going to go in the direction of the thing I clicked on, but for 300 studs. So it's not going to stop at the thing I clicked on. That's the big difference between using the mouse um, to do damage and using a ray cast. All right, now I'm going to get a result when I do my ray cast. So we'll do this workspace colon ray cast. Whoops, we're going to need the origin. We're going to need the stop. And then we're going to need the params, right? That has my filter table and stuff in it. Let's check the result. So if the result, if there's some result, then let's take a look at the target. So when we hit something, the result instance is the thing we hit, right? So I'll check if target.parent exists, then we'll just make sure that not only does the target exist, let's do that too. Well, we know the target exists because we hit it. So let's make sure the parent exists. Then I'll say if target parent, let's check for accessories. He might have a hat on, right? This is, this is one of the cool things about the ray casting. So target dot parent is a accessory. Then Let's get our table and insert into our filter table the target, right? We're going to ignore it. Say, hey, ignore that. It's an accessory. It's a hat. And you might not want to, you might want to do even more checking than this, right? It might be armor. You might want to degrade the damage if you find armor, right? So then we're going to get our params. The fil filter descendant instances, I am going to have this filter table reassigned to this. Now that we have our accessory associated with our filter table, if we cast the ray again, uh, it's going to go right through it. So if you have a hat on, it's going to go right to the messy hair, but the messy hair is an accessory. So we need to go through that. How are we going to do that? We need to call this cast ray recursively until we get through all of our accessories. So I'll do a return cast ray pass in the hit from up here, which gives us our stop position, uh, the thing we clicked on. We are gonna keep going through here until we stop hitting accessories, right? Keep adding it to our filter table. So eventually we will run out of accessories, right? And probably only be at most three deep. And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna look for a humanoid associated with something else that we could hit. It might be a wall or a tree or something, but it might be a body part. So I'm going to get the target. I'm going to get the parent of the target. We, we did an if statement to make sure it exists. We'll do a find first child on that parent looking for the humanoid. If the humanoid does exist, then we can do 
Hume, take damage. And we'll just do damage. All right. So that will avoid the problem of having hats and stuff or accessories that block the, the, the uh, player. But how do we go through players? Well, here we have a humanoid. There's a target associated with the humanoid. So it's going to be like a chest or a head or an arm or something. Let's go ahead and get the table insert to our filter table, the target, right? His head or his chest or whatever. Then we'll get the params, filter descendant instances, set that to our filter table with our newly updated target. And then let's do a cast ray. Let's do a return cast ray. You actually don't need to do the return because we're at the end anyway, and we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to end it, but let's just go ahead and keep it consistent. We have a return here. We have a return here and you might want to check other stuff on the way down. You want, might want to make these else ifs. So this is it. We are able to avoid accessories and we're able to shoot through other characters and non or well, players and non-playing characters. Let's test this thing out. Let's go to our workspace. And here's our pistol, we'll drag it down into starter pack. There we go. And I'm going to go home toolbox. I'm going to grab this slaw dog construction worker just so that we have something with accessories, but I'm going to actually do this with a test server. So we'll get two players start that up. I'm going to pause this because it's going to take a while to start up. That way we can try it with players and non-playing characters. All right, test server is started. Here I am. And I got a hat and glasses and all that other stuff. Let's see if I can do damage. I'll shoot right in the glasses. And it did do damage. And then here's the slaw dog construction guy. Let's go ahead and stand behind him. All right, and then he's got a backpack too. I'm gonna grab my other guy. Let's get my pistol. Where's my pistol? There it is. I'm going to shoot through slaw dog construction and get my other player. My mouse is dying. Here we go. Boom. Boom. Look at that. He's dead too. It's just that he didn't have any animation, so he didn't fall over or anything.